Reinhardt's Joel Powell, Jordan the Lion, and we are back in Los Angeles. Um, we've actually been back for a little over a week. I've just been hanging out with John and going and hanging out with friends and catching up with people. And today we are actually going to meet a new friend. Um, about a year ago, I got a message from someone telling me that they loved my channel and when I saw their name, I was actually a fan of theirs. Um, it is comedian Lunell. And I had first seen Lunell, even though she's had a long career, um, in So I Married an Axe Murderer, and then again in Borat. And now she's in the new Dolomite that Eddie Murphy is starring in on Netflix, and she's also in the upcoming Coming to America. We've been trying to have lunch and hang out for so long, but once we connected, her schedule and my schedule went crazy through the roof, and we just can't seem to make it happen, but we're making it happen today. So we're going to go have lunch, and then I'm hoping to um, introduce you guys to Lunell and kind of ask her how she found out about me and what she's up to, and let her just be her, because she's awesome. So Days with Jordan the Lion, it begins right now. All right, Lunell had some meetings today, so our lunch turned into an early dinner, and I think we're going to film a little interview with her outside, so forgive a little bit of the wind noise if we have some. I'm trying to think. Well, when you, when you did Angelique, which was crazy interview with Angeline, and she didn't say nothing, and she wouldn't pull that thing off her face, huh? She wanted and to, she, like she, she told me she charges $10,000 to be on camera. Like for me to have videoed her at all, yeah, that's what it was gonna be. Yeah, that's hilarious. She's got to make money some kind of way. <laughs> So okay. Lunell, we're going to introduce you because I'm going to leave that in. I thought that was great. Okay. Lunell, you are a world famous comedian. I mean, you've been doing it for, God, you mentioned you knew Ru Rudy Ray Moore. Yeah. And you've been, I saw you in So I Married an Axe Murderer, uh, of course Borat, and the I Rock. watched, yeah, The Rock. Like a man. Go for it. Uh, 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 that's my boy, Adam Thomas, that's my boy, um, Taken Two. Uh, like lots of crazy stuff. And then I watched Dolomite today, which was awesome. Good to see Eddie Murphy, like back to the Eddie Murphy that I grew up yeah, watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're in Coming to America 2, the sequel to the great Coming to America. And we out in Christmas. Now you contacted me because you liked watching my channel. How did you find me? This you is know, an honor. Swiping through YouTube, laying around on my iPad, and I said, join the lion. And I'm like, well, what the hell? What kind of, what, what? I don't know. I just clicked it. The spirit told me to click on it. And then I watched you, and then I noticed that we had something in common, which was the love of Hollywood trivia. And so I was like, oh, this is great. And so then I just started, you know, watching you more. And, you know, the J. Mansfield Carr plays and the. Uh, which is closing February 16th. If you ever wanted to see it, he's closing it down in a month. I see it through you. Good. <laughs> and then, and then um, uh, you know, Clark Gable and Carol Lombard's honeymoon, hideaway, I thought it was crazy. And of course, the Black Dahlia and everything. I was like, this is cool. This guy really enjoys, you get really excited about it, which is what I like, because you're not just like, womp, womp, womp. You really get excited about it. The information that you're sharing with us. I do, because I miss those days, you know? So then it was like, Days of Jordan Light, and da 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 da, and here's your email. So I started to write this guy one day, so then watch the new thing again, and I said, I'm going to write him. And I did, and I wrote this, I really enjoy your, your vlog, and that, you know, I'm really interested in Hollywood trivia as well, and I just wanted to tell you how much I enjoy it. And then we started corresponding, and then We've been trying to go to lunch for how long? Over a year, I would say. Over a year we've been trying to go to lunch, but when you're busy in Hollywood, you got to strike while the iron's hot. That's right, so. you've been making movies, you've been touring all over the world, and you're doing a, you were doing a residency for Jimmy Kimmel's club, brand new club in Las Vegas. Yes, I have a residency there now. I'll be back there on Sunday, February 9th, and I'm there every Sunday at 10 o'clock. You may say, well, who can go see anybody Sunday in Vegas? Oh, well, people in Vegas can. Yeah. Sunday night in Vegas is like Friday afternoon any place else. And um, so I'm there at um, Jimmy Kimmel Comedy Club. I, I, I've been there for like six months last year. I go back in February and I'll be there all the way through New Year's Eve again. 
and you still have time to watch me while you're on the road because I saw you're in Qatar you've been in where uh, Dubai you've literally been of, everywhere a lot, of, a lot of time downtime alone in a hotel room so you've been in bed with me Jordan. <laughs> That's good to hear. Now, can I also mention that I was blown away when I saw Eddie Murphy return to Saturday Night Live and you in the pictures, you were there. Yeah, I was there at 30 Rock um, at the SNL uh, studios. That had to be the most exclusive. There. Yeah, it was great. The feeling back there was just so exciting and you got to see, you know, how the scrambling of it, like there's dancers going here. Reindeer going there, news people going there, you know, and people are changing costumes and sets are, there's some pre taped stuff and there's some stuff that's right there and you get to see how it works. Very ensemble, very, um, uh, and I didn't know how big the audience was. I thought the audience was just the people that are down here, but there's people all around here too in the studio audience that you don't know and they're lined up outside, excited to come in and see Eddie, you know, was, was iconic. So that was really, really fun. And, and coming to America, because I had auditioned like seven times for the part of Lady Reed in Dolomite, um, and they gave it to Divine Joy Randolph, which I think did an excellent job, made me Eddie's aunt. That's Craig Brewer, the director, so he directed Coming to America as well. So apparently I didn't have to audition for him no more, and he just said, well, I'll throw, throw her in this. So that's how I'm in that. That's so awesome. And and you being at Saturday Night Live, now you know how it works for when you get to host it because yeah. I have a feeling that is going to happen in your future. Uh, people have said that and I'm ready when they are. But listen, people, we're in a, like, we're in a vicarious place right now. <laughs> and a couple of cars drive by occasionally. Yeah, cars flying by. Um, and then also, as you know, uh, like we don't know exactly when this is going to go, but maybe uh, me and my fancy nails are going to be on Wendy Williams on Thursday. And I'll be talking about my residency there and whatever else, you know, she wants to talk about. <laughs> Is this your busiest year, probably, of your career, would you say? Uh, last year was very busy. This, we're only in January, but I have a feeling if everything we're plotting and work toward last year comes to fruition, this year will be a very busy year and this year, too. Can I ask you how long you've been a professional stand-up comedian? I've been a professional stand-up comedian for 30 years. Before there was a... Def Comedy Jam, before there was a Comic View, before there was a, you know, $30,000 payday. I was doing it just for the love of stand-up. Because I don't know, you know, the Instagram people are great and they've got their lane for sure. Some of them are very talented and I think they should go into acting. Because you can't always translate one minute off of Instagram into 45 minutes on stage. But I just feel like you shouldn't do stand-up unless you feel like you're going to die if you don't do it. I agree. You know, a lot of people use it as that springboard into movies or TV, well, but definitely because you know comedians don't have a union. Clowns have a union. Ballerinas got a union. Comedians don't have a union, so you will never get any health care being a stand-up comedy. You got to go into acting or something like that. But you should want to. And that's what they say about wrestlers. Wrestlers do the movies because they get insurance through doing the, the through making the SAG money. Union? I bet wrestlers got a union. They all, at least at least the ones I grew up with, they all had their own personal insurance. Oh yeah. Oh, maybe back when he's got Calhoun in <laughs> Well, the reason I asked how long you've been doing it was because I wanted people to kind of consider the fact that you can work at something a long time and, and you have success all the way up through that time, but your greatest success can be 30 yeah, years yeah. in and you have no idea. It's like if you love something, you gotta stick with it always. Well, you know, um, Molly Gibbs was in her 40s when she started doing The Jeffersons. Yeah. And if you watch The Marvelous Miss Maisel, you know, she was a grown married woman with children before she started her comedic career and that was totally by a fluke. And I remember seeing this meme and it was a guy with a, a pickaxe like this that was digging a tunnel, right? And right this far from, it, and he stopped. And if he'd have picked just a little bit further, right here was the pot of gold. I never forgot that. If he'd have picked just a little bit further, everything that water I was picking for was right here, but he stopped and gave up. So the only way you're gonna succeed is if you just never give up. The something's gonna stick to the wall sooner or later. I think so too, if you have any kind of talent or personality, I think there's, uh, as, as long as you follow what you love, 
because I did so many things that I love, but it wasn't, when I look back on it now, I go, I would have never been happy doing it for a long time. I'm happy, so happy doing what I do now and meeting people like you that you're like, hey, I watch you and yet I, and yet we watch each other, you know? Yeah. You have to be happy if you do what you are passionate about. You'll never really work a day in your life, you know? You can do all what you love. Like, who doesn't love interviewing people and seeing different places and you work on your own schedule and you don't have to take a drug test and you don't have to punch a clock and you don't have to get a review or yeah. you're sweating because you're two minutes late from lunch or any of that. Life, as we now know, is way too short. And I was thinking, you know, you and I were talking at lunch about how much we liked early Saturday Night Live. We loved Gilda Radner and all those. And it's like, when that show started, nobody knew if it was going to be a success. And all those comedians were nobodies. And look at how big the show and how long it's lasted. And all the people that started with it just kind of goes to show sometimes there's a magic that, you look know. Look at all the people that came out of In Living Color. Oh, my gosh. You another one of my favorites. That. Yeah. That could run forever, too, because it cracks me up. You know, Jim Carrey was a good example of that. Jim so Jim Carrey, Tommy Davidson, Jamie Foxx, uh, 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 Keenan Ivory Wayans, and you know, just a bunch of great, great people off that show. Now, can I say I was dying watching your Instagram while you were filming Coming to America because you had some great stuff with Tracy Morgan uh, behind the scenes playing air guitar. It yes, smells like Teen Spirit. <laughs> That's that was the greatest great. air band ever on my Instagram. My Instagram is at Lumel at L U E N E L L. Scroll through my ground. The kids say my page is lit or whatever like that. It's great. And you can scroll back and you can see uh, some of the filming and yeah, what we were doing behind the scenes. We just recreated all that because I just uh, filmed Tracy Morgan's show, The Last OG, out in New York once again with John Amos, Anne Maria Horsford, Cat Williams, and J.B. Smooth and Artie Fuqua and people like that. And we did a Thanksgiving uh, episode and Robert Townsend directed it. And it's all heaters, you know, and we had lots of fun as well during the breaks, you know, because Tracy Morgan, he's a walking miracle, first of all. Yeah, okay. yeah, that he, he survived. His brain be good enough to do comedy and memorize lines. And he's, he's as funny as ever, he's I think. As funny as ever, but now he's got just millions and millions of dollars. <laughs> Man. Now, can I ask you, is there, what's next for you? Not, not in the immediate future, but what, are you satisfied? Are you content or what's more in your, in your bucket list of things you want to do in your career and in your life? As much as I love doing stand up on the road, I think I would like to get off the road so much because I miss a lot of stuff with my daughter. I miss being at home and events in LA. So we're really trying to shop a television show for me. And hopefully, you know, this year I might get the green light and get a show. Because once they let me on, I'm not going to never come off. And then I'll just go out on the road maybe once or twice a month rather than every week, you know. That's great. It's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of packing on the back. It is. And that's a lot of recovering time when you come back. And, and I do Vegas every Sunday. Did I mention I do Vegas every Sunday? Because, yeah, you and I, I were Sunday. talking about, like, you're flying home on Super Bowl day. It's like, that's the kind of schedule you keep. I've watched Super Bowl on the airplane maybe this is probably my third time. And you told me, like, you were even doing a gig New Year's Eve. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like, you, you never stop. And I think that's the key to success. Well, is stop, that's when you get all stiff and toe up. And it's hard to get back up when you've been down for a long time. So... And you just keep moving, just keep putting one foot in front of the other, make it slow. You may have to start getting ready two hours earlier instead of 45 minutes earlier. But if you just keep going, like, you know, I made it here, I made it to, here to you today. Do you still have the, the fire every night that you perform? I mean, do you still get that high on stage that you... I do, and I know that there's a lot of people out there when I've sold out and there's a really good crowd. If you go somewhere and, you know, you're in North Dakota and it's not that many people interested in seeing you and then you get kind of hurt, you know, you don't take a person, but you do. So I get excited when I know the people out there and that they're waiting for me. Yeah. You know, not new edition, not, you know, uh, new kids on the block for me. Yeah. I do get excited, yeah, because I get excited for the people. 
And how much of your act do you do that's kind of like off the cuff? Do you do crowd work with people or is it, do you have an act that you like to stick with because you have beats or like it or just, it captures your personality better? I have certain stuff worked out that I know I'm going to do, but I'm free enough spirit to, if something happened right backstage before I went out, I can talk about that. It doesn't throw me and I do do a little bit of crowd work when I can see them. <laughs> yeah. And when I want to, if, if you know, if it's somebody's birthday or somebody has sent me a note, just my anniversary or whatever like that, then yeah. Now as somebody who's done countless TV, movies, comedic shows, everything, what kind of advice would you give to anybody that's ever thinking they want to do it? Yeah, for those who want advice from someone who didn't have to audition for coming to America too, <laughs> there it is. Lunell, thank you so much for being on my channel and thank you for letting me have lunch with you and hang out with you today. This has been a blast. I, I keep on keeping on doing what you're doing because we enjoy you. And you know, you got plenty of people out here who get to see stuff through your vision and they may never get to go to those places and see the things are right. So you're doing a service for trivia lovers like that. And, and I wanted to say one last thing also is that um, our friend of the channel, Lenard, he was one of my earliest subscribers yeah. and my earliest friends doing this. He was one of the people that before he knew I knew you, he said, you ever thought about doing a vlog on Lunell? And I said, that's so funny you mentioned that because her and I are friends now. And he was so excited knowing that this vlog someday was going to come. So well, I want to... Hey, I want to dedicate this to him. We did it, Lenard! <laughs> you know, dreams do come true if you wish upon a star, right? That's right. Thank you, Lunell. Thank you, Jordan, the life. All right, my friends, that was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed meeting Lunell. I certainly did. We had a blast, and I'm sure it won't be the last time that we do that. Thank you, everyone, for watching, and thank you, Shelly Boone, Joe Soldezo, Christy Mays, Kip Piper. Debbie Buckheim and D Hickman for becoming my newest Patreons. We'll see you all next time. Have a great night and goodbye.